practical aspect we do it over at Front Lab. Not only do we deal with the, with the theoretical, but we also deal with practical. So that's Fermilab. Who am I? Uh, basically, at Fermilab, I'm a design drafter. For all intents and purposes, I'll model the model. If an engineer gives me something to model up, I model it up, create the drawings, make sure they adhere to certain standards. I'll check other people's drawings, and so on and so forth. As far as my education is concerned, as you can see, why am I here if I'm a software engineer? <laughs> it's amazing what outsourcing can do to a genre nowadays. So I fell back on the family business, which is drafting, modeling, so on and so forth. Uh, formerly trained with, with Annex when it was known as the uh, Unigraphics back in version 16, back in Detroit. Been working with Unigraphics since version 1. So pretty much have seen some of the lovely rigmarole of going from dead data to virtual uh, the virtual assemblies, sketches, so on and so forth. And as far as where I've worked, as you can see with a wide variety of logos, I've been on a few places over the last few years. So it's the nature of the industry nowadays. I pretty much have skill and will travel. So what does that really mean? To my wife, she doesn't care. I have shown her what I do on the computers. I've shown my kids. It's like my mom talking to my dad. Oh, you make lines on paper. As long as the paychecks come coming in, they're happy. And for the most part, I think most of you here have your own significant others that you're trying to please on a daily basis. Yeah. So enough of the introductions. Why talk about this topic? Maybe kind of like. Now, let's be blunt. People keep talking about 3D, 3D, 3D manufacturer, hard to part. It's the way of the future. It is the future. It's here. How many people still have to rely on giving a drawing to somebody else? And let's face it. It can be paper, it can be vellum, it can be a tiff, it can be a gift. Look, if we got represented on a 2D medium and 3D, you're going to be dealing with the situation of drawings. And it is, <laughs> I can go on and on about standards, but I think everyone here knows the adage. There's so many to choose from at this point. But what is a drawing? Is it just a bunch of scribbles on the paper? Is it just a napkin you got handed to you the, the, the night before and said make 10,000 of these by the end of the week? I tend to fall back on something that was given to me a long time ago when I started drafting. And this was from Henry, Henry Wheeler. I'm not going to go verbatim on what it says here, but it's probably to the point. Whatever you have on that piece of paper, on that computer screen, it better tell whoever is going to make that part, work with that part, deal with that part, the basics they need to know, so they're not just stuck there like a bump on the side of the road trying to figure out what happened. But there's the caveat of the drawing. It's hard to update. I got brand new drawing, I got my drawing done, I'm happy. Oh, revision A just came out for this part. Revision B came in on this part. Oh, guess what? Our vendor went belly up. We're switching over to this vendor. And in the old days, yeah, listen, my dad complained in hard and fast and going at night, you just drew everything. Everything looks perfect. Next thing you know, got the electric razor, uh, eraser going through trying to get everything done. And then on the 2D system, oh, we just pick the lines off and just move them around. You're still moving things around a little too much. We got cat patches. We got lovely cat patches and patches. But that's the thing. They're tools. There still is the methods behind them that people need to have to work with those tools. And I hear people say, well, wait a minute, you got a cat package. Why do I have to talk about methods at all? Why? I'll just throw a couple of lines here. 
here. It just represents what I need. I don't have to worry about this. It's done. No. That's the assumption that's made by a lot of people in a lot of wrong places. The reason why I have this up here is because I was an owner of Cobalt. And if it wasn't for the fact that I had a dealership give me a faulty third-party alarm system, I probably would have wrapped my car around a tree a long time ago. So I tend to get a little touchy about the assumptions that are made. And let's face it, with CAD, with the advent, we're seeing a loss of eyes, number of eyes seeing things as it goes through. Uh, sorry if I'm choking up a little bit, it's just the way it is. And I'll be honest with you, well, my father always said, and pardon my French, there is no pure fucking magic button in any cat package anywhere. Not. So what am I going to babble about for the next half an hour or so? Basically, I have four basic concepts or basic methods that have been used from time to time in places. Some of them you may, be, you may be using already, so it might be a rehash. My apologies. For some, for some of you else, this might be new information, so bear with me. I hope you don't mind, I'm going to sit down because I'm going to have to be button mashing for the next couple of minutes. As far as, lever, as, far as method number one, basically, it's the little known caveat of the UG part especially when using UG part or master model concept in team set. UG part is basically a small assembly you can exploit. Number two, sometimes you don't necessarily need to put a 3D part as a background. Say you're looking for a clearance or a cut line or something of that nature. But you don't want it to be dead data. So if the part changes, the cut line moves with it. So basically, we'll leverage sketches and reference sets to work with that idea. Now, number three is a bit of a fun one because this one's pretty much a team center-ish situation. I'm not exactly sure. Anybody in here using NX with wind chill or theorem? Got to ask that question. I get some weird emails from time to time from recruiters for companies trying to use NX with different database products. And then the last one, this one's a little bit more on a larger macro scale, depending on what you're trying to build. In terms of using reference sets to simplify a sub-assembly to show in your assembly, you're showing the change, but you're not bringing the 100 divided part that you don't want with it. As far as the functions that are going to be referenced today during the presentation, I don't have them all spelled out in slide by slide by slide. It'd be like 150 slides, and I think you guys are going to get bored that way. So if you see something at the end of the pre if you see something during the presentation, you want to call it out during question and answer period. I'll come back to it. But basically, as far as involving modeling, assembly, and drafting, we'll go over a little touch on reference sets, sketches, layers, and object display. Uh, as far as assembly specific functionality, we're talking about the pro uh, properties and reference only checkbox. Touch a little bit about way of linking, touch a little bit about assembly cuts. And then, lastly, as far as drafting, is working with layers, invisible in view, and high components in view. John? Since you're here, I gotta ask this question. Since you had that big lecture about NX11 at the about menu, is are we going to be losing the no. menu button? No. Okay. That's permanent. Good. I thank you. you. Thank you. Reason? We need, reason? If we wanted, if we wanted to get rid of it, we couldn't. Because there is a technical reason why it's there. But for us old timers, it's like our you know go go to. I saw our go to. For those of us that do help desk work and training, it's also a go-to. Because right. how many people here have a wonderful plethora of ribbons at your work? I'm seeing just a couple of hands pop up. 
So whatever I try to show today, I'm going to be running it off the menu command. So I'm going to try to stay ribbon neutral as possible. I mean, the one comment I would make though is that I would hope that in training new users, that over time that doesn't really become a crutch for them. Uh, command finder is really kind of the go forward way of finding something that you don't really know where it's at. Those of us have been around. That, that old structure is in our memory, yeah. and so we use that because it's familiar to us. Yeah. But new users really should be taught, you know, don't go there, go to the, the command finder if it's something you can't find. True, true. Yeah. It's it's the one question I got for you, sorry for doing the dialogue in the middle of a lecture here, but have you had any questions from companies saying, can we have a company-specific ribbon? Well, I mean, you, you can do. make, you can do, you can yeah. do roles. And then once you have created a role, which is just, a, uh, just another uh, you know, uh, MTX file, mm -hmm. you can set up an environment variable so that everybody who logs in just points into the same role. That works. That would be the way to go. Because that just started a little bit of a conversation piece with a few people in there. Good point. Then you should use roles. Roles are one of those things that people sort of overlook, but it's a way of, of both capturing the changes you've made and helping you maybe impose a more commonality, you know, across your organization by just sharing roles, either force, you know, either by forcing it or just letting people share by just, you know, here, here, take my file and do it. Perfect, perfect. On that note, let's move on <laughs> because I figured that's one, that's something you're going to have to have a conversation with your system admins and your folks, management folks on. One of the first one of the first methodologies that, are, that could be exploited or used is, for all intents and purposes, with the master model concept, the UG part file your drawing file is a small assembly. So if you want to show a piece of background for that part for some sort of manipulation purposes, please bear with me. I have gone with some very very simplistic examples here that may have no basis in reality for functionality. But say I have a part, say in this case I have this small copper ring, stock part I ordered from, order from a vendor. And say before I do any form of sort of final machine or I may share it with different multiple platforms for different parts, I'm going to wind up cutting it, maybe 90 degrees to four, por uh, four portions or so on and so forth. But yet, I just want to kind of show what this thing looked like before the cutting started. To that end, and can everybody see this? <coughs> Is the font size big enough? Okay. okay. Basically, what we have here is our drawing. And if you go over to the assembly navigator, you'll notice Here's, here's my, uh, my UG part file. Here's my UG master. <laughs> All right. No, actually, do me a favor. Yeah, steady, steady, carbon back. Yes. Dumbledore. Pretty much. much. Sad thing is, I left my laser pointer at home. So. Well, what I've done here is I've hung another model. Thanks, Larry. Larry, Larry Carpenter. <laughs> but basically what I've done is I've hung the, uh, the common component right in the model file. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, shouldn't that be kicking off some sort of error when you do that or some sort of warning message when you do that in NX? Well, it does, to an extent. I don't know how well you're seeing this. Let me see if I can expand this so you can. The relationship you are building by adding a component to a non-master will not be, be visible in Team Center. Are you sure you want to do this? If you're working with some, if you're trying to work with this from a background standpoint, 
you might not necessarily want to be cluttering up teams on a whole bunch of things. Yes, you could be working this way. <coughs> and once you get past that message, and bear with me as I switch over the monolith so you can see this. <laughs> the joy of working with systems. Unfortunately, <coughs> what you were supposed to see here was a nice assembly cut with the actual with the actual ring itself being cut to be displayed. Unfortunately, it's something not a clip. Normally, <coughs> you should see something. Let me shrink this down. You should see something like this. Basically, I've used object display to put this in phantom line as so. So when I go to generate So when I go to generate my PDF, well, there we go. You get your drawing itself. Calling out what I'm using and calling out as far as the cut. So far, so good. Move on to the next method. Put this down. Go back. <clears throat> method two, creating a live 2D background lines. Going a little bit further on the machine. So I've got my part, I cut it down into the quarter. Those quarters can be used for different purposes. But for this instance, I need to take that quarter and literally cut off one side, parallel to the cut. And I need to do a different, uh, need to do the same thing on the other side, but at a different measure. Now I can do that, I can do that in an X relatively easy. Basically using data planes and trim bodies. And of course that in as a little bit of machining afterwards as far as the holes is concerned. But how do I display that machining? For that cutting on the drawing itself. Well, what I can do is I can add a sketch in, a, in the model itself, put it on a separate layer from the rest of the model. Constrain the sketch in such a way where I'm showing the original, original size of the part itself, and then show the distance of where these things are going to be cut eventually. Basically, I have a collinear line against the, a collinear line, a sketch line against the edge here, and a collinear sketch line against this edge here. So that way, when I go over to the over to the over to the drawing, <coughs> I can dimension with parallel dimensions without any problems. change. 
say I go over to. There we go. <clears throat> say I go to this data plane. If I was modeling, I'll be glad when that function comes in. It comes in where you can just switch over without too much trouble. <laughs> right now it's at three inches. Say I want to cut this thing back to say 1.5 inches like so. Say okay. Normally I would have this thing hidden. I go back over to the drawing itself. Go back to drafting. Go to update the drawing. And as you can see, I have dimension change with relatively no trouble. So I'm not worried about a dead line just floating on the drawing, just being completely and utterly skewed. So far, so good. Everyone in the mood for method three? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Moving on to method three. Now this one, as I referred to before, this one is a uh, methodology that is if you're using Team Center. Now if you're not using Team Center, Sorry, this one's not going to work as good. And if you're using a different database system, I'm not aware yet if, that, if this function doesn't work with theorem or works with Grimshell. But basically, there is the ability in NX to turn or to make a part reference. And that way, Team Center does not recognize. So if you're trying to run automated bombs, you have downstream users that are already looking at your parts list to do buying and things of that nature. They don't see it, they don't care. But in the NX, in your NX assembly, you do see it, you do care, especially if the background changes on you a little bit. Now for that method, I'll show this on the screen. I'll show this in the screen too. But if you're working from NX through Team Center, your assembly is in Team Center. When you go into your assembly navigator, highlight one of your components, right click, all the way down in the big, big list, depending if you have it truncated or not. You should see something that says properties. In the assemblies tab of properties, you should see this one item here called component as reference only. Turn it on, Team Center doesn't see it. Turn it off, it's seen by everybody. Let's do this live so everyone can see this. Here we go. Currently, here is my party.